let's talk about chemical evolution. In laboratory science, it is proven that hydrogen cannot turn into another element, so we already know that chemical evolution is impossible. Actually, the sun is powered by hydrogen being converted into higher elements by a process called fusion. It's the energy released from this fusion that heats and lights the earth. However, the creationist may well argue that no one has actually ever been to the sun. Ah, I'm burning to death! Oh, you know how much an apartment that big would cost on the sun? So let's discount the sun for the moment. Here on Earth, there are numerous groups working on laser fusion where hydrogen is converted into higher elements. Then of course there's the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, currently being built in France, which is designed to harness the energy released from the fusion of hydrogen into helium. However, even if a creationist were to ignore all of these examples by which hydrogen is converted into higher elements, there are more graphic examples of fusion. It is proven that hydrogen cannot turn into another element. Hydrogen cannot turn into another element, which we've proven to be impossible. Here's a fun fact. Because the moon can eclipse the sun so perfectly, we can measure the constituency of the sun, the materials and elements on its surface, by observing the pinkish arc of the chromosphere at the moment of totality. Here's a fun fact. The only reason we cannot observe the elements on the surface of the sun all the time is because we live under an atmosphere. Without this, you could make exactly the same observations you can during an eclipse simply by putting your finger over the body of the sun. Here's a fun fact. If we could actually see in the H alpha wavelength, we would be able to directly observe the dynamic behavior of the surface of the sun. Here's a fun fact. Have you ever wondered why there isn't an eclipse every time the moon orbits the Earth? Well, it's simple. The angle between the plane in which the moon orbits the Earth to the plane in which the Earth orbits the sun is about 5 degrees. Practically, this means that a total solar eclipse can only happen at two times of the year. In a different geometrical arrangement, such as, say, for instance, the moons of Jupiter, an eclipse is observed every time the moon goes around the planet. The moon fits over the sun so perfectly that it makes it possible to observe the surface of the sun. Otherwise, this would be impossible. If the moon was too big or too small, it would be impossible. Because of our vantage point from the Earth, the moon fits perfectly over the sun, the chances of which are one in a trillion. What a crock of shit. The distance between the Earth and the Moon varies by about 10%, between about 360 and 410 million meters. This practically means that the angular size of the Moon can vary by about 10%. As a direct result of this, about 60% of non-partial eclipses, the Moon is too small to completely cover the Sun, and an annular eclipse is observed. In the remaining 40%, the Moon is too large, and a total solar eclipse is observed. All that is required to observe the outer layers of the Sun is for the Moon to be angularly bigger than the Sun. Further, it's completely bogus to call this perfect, for the simple reason that the Moon does not have a smooth surface. This causes an effect known as Bailey's Beads, where the Sun shines through the valleys of the surface of the Moon. Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know how the planet was formed, because I don't. The Bible says God made the heavens and the earth in six days. Is that the same Bible that allows you to make the statement that... The moon fits perfectly over the sun, the chances of which are one in a trillion. You see, this is the thing I'm always curious about when creations to assess probabilities. In order to make a statement on the probability of the moon perfectly covering the sun, ignoring for the moment the fact that it doesn't, you would need to have a solid understanding of the mechanisms and the dynamics of the formation of the solar system and the planets. And yet... Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know how the stars or the planet was formed because I have no idea. Clearly this is pure imagination, yet it's in a science textbook. Ridiculous, right? So if there is pure imagination sneaking into the textbooks, how can you trust what it says? Let's keep going. 
the conservation of angular momentum, we're going to talk about it, shows that if some... What, do you mean the conservation of angular momentum that's in all the textbooks which only moments ago you described as containing complete imagination and as ridiculous? The moon fits over the sun so perfectly that it makes it possible to observe the surface of the sun. In laboratory science, it is proven that hydrogen cannot turn into another element. So, we already know that chemical evolution is impossible. And the chances of which are one in a trillion.